Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Political Union, a thing of the past, admits Kenneth Clark. EU first step to help Europe's jobless youths. EU seeks monitoring of ship emissions to spur global curbs. Computer and printer prices to rise in EU because you can't print copywritten stuff. Plus, EU to cut mobile phone roaming charges by up to 36%. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, the European Union must stop taking powers from Britain because the push for an ever closer political union lies in the past, Kenneth Clark, the minister without portfolio, has conceded. Mr Clark, the former Chancellor and a noted Europhile, has backed a manifesto by the think tank British Influence which sets out the reasons for Britain remaining in the European Union. However, the manifesto, which is also supported by Danny Alexander, the Chief Secretary to the Treasury, and Lord Manderson, the former Labour Cabinet Minister, calls on European leaders to recognise the aim of an ever closer union is no longer relevant. Mr Clark has repeatedly spoken out about the dangers of the UK leaving the EU. Last month he warned that Britain would be excluded from lucrative international deals in the event of an exit, meaning fewer jobs and higher prices in the shops. What I want to know from Mr Clark is where is the evidence to support these statements he makes? Even the government's own statistics do not support this outlook that Mr Clark puts across. He has for years continued to stand on his political platform and spout rhetorical statements and clichés and always with nothing to support his claims. Why does the media continue to give him time and attention? E leaders have ended their summit in Brussels by agreeing to put €6 billion Euros into youth training schemes amid record unemployment. They also agreed to promote lending to credit-starved small businesses using an extra €10 billion Euros in funding. Nearly a quarter of job seekers aged 18 to 25 in the EU have no work. Critics say the scheme will have little impact until countries return to growth, but Austrian Chancellor Werner Feynman said they were a first step. In another development outlined in the official summit conclusions, EU leaders confirmed they wanted agreement by the end of the year on a way to wind up failed banks at European rather than at national level. <laughs> OK, folks, here we go again. Let me connect two stories for you. Royal Bank of Scotland has been targeted for a banking split, with Mervyn King and George Osborne apparently taking the lead on the initiative. But as is revealed in this story, they are not pulling the strings at all. They are following orders from the Bruswellian kleptocrats. Anyone with half an understanding of cash flow and balance sheets will tell you that splitting RBS and selling the positive assets whilst leaving the taxpayer with bad liabilities is an outrageous rip-off. More to the point, why is it that the unelected EU Commission has the power to dictate to our elected politicians? And furthermore, why do the likes of King and Osborne simply obey? European Union regulators proposed monitoring greenhouse gases from ships starting in 2018 in a plan to encourage global curbs on maritime pollution tied to climate change. The draft law would oblige the owners of ships larger than 5,000 gross tonnes using EU ports to report annual discharges of carbon dioxide, the main gas blamed for global warming. The European measures is meant to be a building block for elusive worldwide emissions curbs. The proposal by the European Commission, the 27 nations' EU regulatory arm, takes place amid a decade-long deadlock in the International Maritime Organization over agreeing a global framework to reduce ship emissions. In addition to supporting any United Nations system, the EU rules would encourage the maritime industry to cut CO2 discharges by increasing transparency, the Commission said. The Court of Justice of the European Union handed down a ruling today that paves the way for levies on anything that can print from a computer. Inkjets, laser printers, multifunction devices, you name it, they're all in line for a price hike. 
The legal shenanigans were kicked off by a German group that handles the collection of secondary royalties for copyrighted works. VG Wart brought a suit against Canon, Epson, Fujitsu, HP and Kyo Series German branches. The complaint that printers allow people to reproduce copyright protected works. That being the case, VG Wart believed that a levy should be collected by the companies that sell printers to compensate rights holders. We'd love to get your thoughts and comments on this little gem of critical institutional thinking. Please do email us with your opinions. The European Union will cut the price mobile carriers such as Vodafone Group and France Telecom can charge customers for checking email and watching videos while travelling by 36% next week. European mobile phone companies can charge customers visiting other EU countries no more than €45 Euro cents per megabyte plus tax starting from the 1st of July. The European Commission said in a statement today that the existing limit of €0.70 cents was set a year ago. From July 2014, the maximum charge for data will be €0.20. Cents. The cuts are part of the European Commission's Vice President Neely Crow's agenda to make the market for European telecommunication companies more unified. Carriers have complained that her initiatives, while consumer-friendly, are too restrictive to phone companies and crimp investment in networks and technology. The Commission said the EU has cut retail prices by 80% since 2007. Today in our video library, I wanted to provide some background into the perspective that I subscribe to when it comes to climate change, aka global warming, etc. A few years ago, I conducted some very swift Google research with regard to atmospheric temperatures of the other planets and moons in the solar system. Well, turns out that, as I suspected, they too were warming and seeing unusual climate changes. When I say unusual, I mean in the time frame from which humans observed the patterns. So today I bring you a very succinct video entitled Energy from Space 2. This video provides you with all the evidence you'll need to lay open to question the whole story of man-made global warming. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>